everyone. So today we're going to be uh, shooting sort of a training course with the Raspberry Pi uh, when used with Control Everything products. So Control Everything manufactures a large number of peripheral devices that are compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, these include relay controllers, current monitors, temperature sensors, pressure sensors, humidity sensors, just about anything you can really imagine really. Um, so what I thought would be good to do is to kind of do a little course on taking a new Raspberry Pi and hooking up some control everything peripheral hardware to it and kind of show you how to take your first steps. You've got to learn how to crawl before you can walk. So what I have today is I have my Raspberry Pi. It's all hooked up with a control everything I2C adapter plugged into it. And then through that adapter, I can connect all sorts of different peripheral hardwares uh, through that I2C bus. Uh, right now, I just have a one-channel relay controller. I think this is a good example. It's very common to want to switch something on and off. This board also happens to have uh, seven digital inputs, so we can read contact closure signals from things like buttons, switches, motion detectors, you name it. So this is a very good thing to get started with. So the first thing that we need to do is talk about the Raspberry Pi a little bit. I'm not going to get into everything that you could possibly need to know about the Raspberry Pi because there are just countless resources online for the Raspberry Pi. It's massively accepted in this community of products, the IoT computing market. So what I have is I have a new Raspberry Pi 3. It is connected to uh, the network over Wi-Fi, over my local network on Wi-Fi. I'm using a, an application called Tight VNC Server, which allows me to remotely access the desktop of the Raspberry Pi from my Mac. Um, there's a very good uh, article on setting that up, and I'll leave uh, notes about that in the description below. You can also just hook up a monitor and a keyboard and mouse to your Raspberry Pi, and that is completely 100% acceptable. That's going to do everything that you need to do. And to be honest with you, if I wasn't shooting a video of the Raspberry Pi desktop, that's probably how I would have done it, um, is to just hook up a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. I actually have that hooked up to the Raspberry Pi, and usually if I'm doing something real small and simple, I'll just hop on the Raspberry Pi and do everything that I need there. So. The way that I have this set up is strictly just because I'm shooting video. You do not have to do this by any means. But if you're interested, I'll leave a link to that article. My Raspberry Pi is running uh, Raspbian. Uh, Raspbian is a, an image of Linux specifically designed for Raspberry Pi. Now there are all sorts of images out there that you can use. Uh, there's noobs. There's Raspbian, there's, uh, you can put uh, Ubuntu on there. You can do anything you want. But that said, depending on which image of Linux you have installed on your Raspberry Pi is going to play a part in how you set up the Raspberry Pi for I2C communications. I like Raspbian um, because the I2C setup is extremely easy. Python comes pre-installed. It even has uh, idle pre-installed for writing Python applications. And I mean, really, that's just the quickest way to, to get a Raspberry Pi up and running for uh, interfacing with our products. So that's, that's what I use. Uh, this is essentially, other than having the tight VNC server installed, this is essentially a fresh Raspberry Pi. Uh, meaning I have not done any settings or anything. So this is like we just took it out of the box and put Raspbian on it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to do a little bit of configuration to allow us to control I2C devices. By default, Raspbian has the I2C port disabled. Um, this is pretty simple to uh, rectify. So what we want to do is we want to open the terminal by clicking here and we're going to want to enter the command my bad, it's sudo raspi-config there we go and that's going to bring up this window here um, so we're going to want to go down to advanced options you'll need to use the keyboard uh, arrows on your keyboard go down to advanced options 
Then we're going to go down here to where we see I2C. Would you like the ARM I2C interface to be enabled? We want to say yes. The ARM I2C interface will be enabled after a reboot. Okay. Would you like the I2C kernel module to be loaded by default? We'll say yes. I2C kernel module will now be loaded by default. Okay. And that's all that we need to do. Now we just need to hit finish and it's going to ask us to reboot. And we have to reboot in order for the I2C to be enabled. So we'll say yes. And the Raspberry Pi will now reboot. You'll see my VNC lose connection because the Raspberry Pi has gone offline. So as soon as it comes back up, we'll get right back to work.